Big story today, jury selection underway in the involuntary manslaughter case against Jennifer Crumbly, the mother of the Oxford High School shooter. Now both the prosecution and the defense are sorting through that jury pool, both sides trying to make sure that they have a jury ready to examine the evidence in this historic case. Yeah, let's head over to Christy McDonald. She's joining us in the newsroom. Now, Christy, you've been digging deeper into what prosecutors have to prove and the jury selection process. Yeah, absolutely, Damon and Karen. So much interest in this case. So with me now is Lillian Diallo. She's a longtime criminal defense attorney. Lillian, I'm so glad that you're with me. When we talk about 300 potential jurors were brought into Oakland County today, they have now 17 that they're starting to question. What are some of the questions that the attorneys and the prosecutors will be asking? And, and I guess how many challenges do each side get in this? So if it's the normal case and it's a non-capital case, you get five challenges, preemptories. Um, the court can exercise a lot of other challenges if they're for cause, mm -hmm. right? There are no limits to for cause. If you say, I definitely think they're guilty, that's a for cause, and that doesn't go against us on the uh, prosecu or on the defense or prosecution side. All right, so the judge thinks that they can really get a jury seated in the next day or so. That's what Sean Lay was reporting. But so let's back up and go ahead and explain what the prosecution has to prove here in the gross negligence in this case, that the parents weren't listening or that Jennifer Crumbly did not know that their son was in distress. So gross negligence, right, it, it's more than just being careless. It means that you knew there could be a danger and you failed to act. As a parent, he's telling you, hey, I need help. I'm hearing voices. I this, that, or the other. And you take them and buy them a gun. And I think this is what is going to be, um, we're going to be seeing so many witnesses here today in court. They talked about there was a list of over 80 witnesses and one name on that list was the shooter himself. Uh, we are seeing filings that Jennifer Crumbly wants her son to testify in this case. What would be the significance here? Nothing. It's a zero-sum game for her. If, in fact, you put the shooter on the stand, which is repugnant, by the way, because he has an appeal going on, you prove the prosecutor's case that it's about you as opposed to him and his needs, right? You're still his parent. You're treading water by putting your feet on his head. We think, again, so much emotion in this case right now. We know that during jury selection, there were some victims of the shooting and family members already in the courtroom right now for the entire Oxford community and everyone who has been traumatized these last two years. This also brings it all back up again and walks it through. It does, and it's got to be very difficult for them because, like I said, there's nothing that will replace what they lost. They will never get over what happened. They'll just have to find a way around it to keep going. It's going to be difficult. And this is something that the entire country is going to be watching. Again, we're talking about historic prosecution here. Lillian Diallo, thanks so much for joining me. And we know that there is extensive interest in this case. We are going to be streaming the trial live on Local 4 Plus once it gets underway and they've seated a jury. So make sure that you download the Local 4 Plus app on your TV wherever you find Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, or if you are on the road, follow us at clickondetroit.com. We'll be streaming it live. We're going to send it back to you guys. All right, Lillian, thanks for that perspective. And Christy, thank you for diving into this. Thank you.